gentlemen it's me Jermaine and I'm back with another uh, special uh, simple truth news update uh, this uh, is part three of the story on one mr. Uh, Trayvon Martin who is now deceased he was murdered uh, a few weeks ago um, and his killer uh, mr. George Zimmerman has not yet been uh, brought in for any type of questioning he has not been arrested but yet uh, there is a push uh, to have a grand jury formed uh, for uh, this case in this situation. I want to read you this article, um, the latest article, um, that uh, will give you some insight on where this is going and what the family is trying to do to seek justice for the loss and murder of their son, Trayvon Martin. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Here's the latest article. Uh, it is dated uh, yesterday, March 20th, uh, as far as the investigation of young Trayvon Martin's uh, senseless shooting and killing, uh, his murder, uh, to, be, to be honest and to be exact. Um, and this article comes, again, from Black America Web, and the, um, the title of the article is Justice Department to Investigate Martin Killing. Outrage over the killing of Trayvon Martin reached Washington Monday as the Congressional Black Caucus called on the Department of Justice to conduct an investigation into the shooting death of the Florida teenager by a white neighborhood watch captain. And by late in the day, uh, the Justice Department had announced it will launch an investigation into Martin's killing. We urge the Department of Justice to immediately and thoroughly investigate the shooting death of Trayvon Martin as a hate crime. Representative Emanuel Cleaver, Democrat from Missouri, uh, CB, uh, CBC chair, said in a statement, this case compromises the integrity of our legal system and sets a horrific precedent of vigilante justice. Cleaver added that as a nation, we cannot should not and will not ignore Trayvon's brutal murder and the inconceivable fact that his killer remains free. Earlier in the day, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney, in response to a reporter's question about whether President Barack Obama had planned to weigh in on the case, said, our thoughts and prayers go out to Trayvon Martin's family. Just the thoughts and prayers go out to the family. This, this is something that should be highly, highly spoken about. But obviously, we're not going to uh, wade into a local law enforcement matter, he added. But late Monday, Justice Department officials announced they were sending its community relations service this week to Sanford, Florida, to meet with authorities community officials, and civil rights leaders to address tensions in the community. The, the department will conduct a thorough and independent review of all the evidence and take appropriate action at the conclusion of the investigation, the agency said in, a, in an email statement. Now let's just look at this, ladies and gentlemen. A young teenage black child was shot and brutally killed, found with nothing but Skittles and an iced tea in his pocket, and the suspected killer or shooter, white male, 28 years of age, and note this, note this, that because he had some criminal justice training, the police officials said that his good record allowed them to let him go while they look into it. I pose a question to you. Would this have been the same result if you would have had, and I want to note that the uh, Sanford, Florida police said that he had a squeaky clean record. If this had been a black man with a squeaky clean record living in a gated community and he had shot a young 
teenage white child, would he have been allowed to leave? Ponder that question for yourself. It says Zimmerman saw Martin as he was patrolling his neighborhood and called 911 to report a suspicious person. Why was he suspicious? Was it just the color of his skin that made him suspicious? Martin, 17, was fatally shot in a gated community in Sanford last month by George Zimmerman, a 28-year-old neighborhood watch captain who thought the teen looked suspicious as he walked back from a convenience store carrying only a package of Skittles and an iced tea. Zimmerman saw Martin as he was patrolling his neighborhood and called 911 to report a suspicious person. He went against the advice of the 911 dispatcher and followed Martin, who was walking home from the store with the bag of Skittles in his pocket. Now, again, he was cautioned and was basically warned by the 911 operator not to pursue, to leave it alone. But yet he went outside of the suggested way to handle this matter and took the matter into his own hands which resulted in the death of this 17-year-old young man. And yet, there is still no arrest and no um, detainment of this, gen of this gentleman. The teen, described by one of his teachers as an A and B student who majored in cheerfulness, lived with his mother in Miami, but was visiting his father and stepmother at the retreat at Lake at Twin Lakes in Sanford. The shooting and apparent shoddy handling of the case by local authorities has spurned anger in the black community and put an intense media spotlight on the local police. Local killings of blacks rarely garner national attention. Trayvon Martin's case has. The drumbeat for justice got only louder after 911 calls from Zimmerman and witnesses were released. The tapes raise questions about the motive waking Zimmerman's argument that he shot Martin in self-defense. Neighbors have also spoken out in recent days and described Zimmerman as an overzealous Neighborhood Watch member. The Miami Herald reported that Zimmerman, a criminal justice student, called police at least 46 times since January 2011 to pre report disturbances, break-ins, or windows left open. In nine of those calls, he reported he saw someone or something suspicious, uh, the paper reported. As watch captain, he told neighbors to be on the lookout, specifically referring to b young black men who appeared to be from the other side of the community's gate. Despite questions from the 911 accounts, Zimmerman remains uncharged and free, and tr a travesty of justice, according to Cleaver. I am outraged by the way in which this case has been handled by the Sanford Police Department in Florida. Those who are meant to protect us and our children have blatantly turned their backs on fairness and justice, the Sanford Police Department. Ladies and gentlemen, this case speaks for itself. It is an outrage. It is terrible. When we truly believe that black-white relations in this country have changed, this, this is not an isolated case. I want to make that very clear, that if you are a p person of color in this nation, this is all too familiar. But the simple truth is, until that this man, Mr. George Zimmerman, is brought to justice, it, it, it will continue to be an outrage. Even after he is brought to justice, it will still be an outrage. We must change people. We must do something in a different way than those that came before us had done before. Just because a young man is black, he's suspicious? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I will continue to follow up on this story. I am Jermaine, your host. This is The Simple Truth, and as I always tell you, the simple things are oftentimes the most profound, but yet they are the most difficult to put into action. Uh-oh, look at him looking.